d'un attentat terroriste islamiste caractérisé. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. A lot's been happening in France and let's face it, the content that is available online either is biased if it's uh, done by the French media or if it's done by Muslims, it's like an hour and a half conversation or articles. It's not accessible information. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to try to keep it short, brief and to the point. Now tell me you like the sound of that. Okay guys, so let's begin with France's general attitude towards Muslims and Islam. Of course, there's two main parties. You've got Macron on one side and you've got Le Pen on the other side. She's from the far right and he was supposed to be from center left or left or whatever it is of the political spectrum. Now, because this guy hasn't really done much and the only way what the far right really care about is this boogeyman that is Islam. All he has to do is scapegoat Islam. Yeah, it's worked in other countries that we know of, uh, India, America, and of course here in the UK. What France did, of course, was ban the niqab, then they banned the burkini, then they moved on to banning the hijab in schools. Uh, especially when election times come near, Muslims, yeah, the hijab or something to do with Islam and Muslims comes up. So you got this magazine that published cartoons of the Prophet, this was a few years ago and that caused many issues in France. Since then people know that Muslims do not appreciate drawing the Prophet peace be upon him. So what happened this year was they went to trial and when they went to trial they republished the cartoons. So when they republished the cartoons Macron yeah, was asked to condemn them and he refused. When something's happening on the lower level you know you got the people fighting amongst each other. But when you got the king yeah, or the president or the prime minister getting involved, that's now state sponsored. So when he's saying I'm not going to condemn it, it's freedom of speech, that's now laying the precedent. Let's see if this freedom of speech is being applied everywhere. No, because France is the same country that in its uh, last few years, it's made it illegal to insult the flag after one guy was seen <laughs> wiping his bottom with it. Yeah, so that offended people. Oh, there's that word, offense. Yeah, it offended people. So not only has France outlawed, you know, desecration of the flag and offense of the flag, but also of the national anthem as well, amongst other things like Holocaust denial and all this sort of thing. So it seems like freedom of speech only applies when it comes to Muslims. This is a census act. So coming back to the republishing of the cartoons and Macron giving it his stamp of approval as well. Two stabbings took place, I think it was yeah, 25th of September this year. After Islamic 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 extremists attacked its editorial offices in 2015, Islam was taken from everyone. Yeah, 1.8 billion people on the planet. It was as if this person personified the whole religion. Yeah, at that moment in time when he was carrying out that attack. And then what happened was Macron then came out and said, yes, Islam is in crisis. Not making the distinction between Islam and Muslims. Uh, but he probably doesn't even know the difference, frankly. L'Islam est une religion qui vit une crise aujourd'hui partout dans le monde. Pigeon-hearted, pusillanimous weasel. And then he goes, no, no, we don't have a problem with the Muslims. What did Malcolm X say? You can't hate the roots of the tree without ending up hating the tree. And the thing is, I know people are like, yeah, but Muslims have done this and Muslims have done that. Okay, but those are individuals, yeah, on the ground. Here we're talking state-sponsored bigotry. You can't compare the two, mate. Parce qu'il apprenait à des élèves la liberté d'expression, la liberté de croire et de ne pas croire, a été la victime d'un attentat terroriste, islamiste, caractérisé. When stuff like this happens, it makes it worse. Even in psychology, you've got something called the Milgram experiment, yeah, which shows that people will go to extraordinary lengths if they are told to do so by a person of authority. So what happened last week was a teacher in France who was known to show pictures of the Prophet peace be upon him was beheaded by a, let's face it, a psychotic individual. Okay, let's see what events built up to that attack. So parents, had been campaigning for some time because apparently that, that teacher was a uh, 
I don't know, what do you call it? A serial sh picture shower of the Prophet? Nothing happened. Then the local mosque, they also shared a video in, in, in which they were saying, look, something needs to be done. What then happened was after this event, the mosque that shared the video got shut down. What message is this sending to the people? Yeah, that here were people who weren't happy with something. They were peacefully protesting and saying, look, what he's doing is wrong. Something needs to be done about it. He loses his job or, or he stops doing it. But it's like these people are now being treated as the co-conspirators. Yes, of course, the murder of the teacher is wrong. Yeah, that goes without saying. But now that he's passed away, that doesn't make what he did correct. Yeah. And what's even more perplexing is the fact that he is now being given an award. Uh, and in fact, it's the most prestigious award in France. I mean, what on earth is going on, frankly? This, this whole beheading thing, yeah, it had me perplexed. But then I saw this report that earlier this year, I think June or July, France has returned 24 heads of Algerians. Yeah, the 24 skulls, yeah, back to Algeria from their colonial past that they had kept as trophies in their museums. I mean, what is this obsession with the French and heads? So what these guys are now doing is they're panicking, yeah? They're showing a lack of leadership, chaos, and breeding more contempt and more hatred and division by shutting down charities and NGOs, targeting mosques indiscriminately. And that has led to the latest crime, the latest terrorist attack, which is two Muslim women have been stabbed near the Eiffel Tower. I think one of the sisters was stabbed six to seven times. And you could hear people saying, you know, calling them dirty Arabs. When the leaders and when state-sponsored bigotry is rife, it leads to anarchy. But you know what's really sad here is, yes, the beheading of the teacher is ridiculous, yeah, unjustifiable. But so is this stabbing as well. It's a clear terrorist attack. Calling that a terrorist attack and blaming an entire religion and saying we need to do this and having special laws uh, coming out. But here Muslims have been stabbed and the media was silent. It was only after the uproar in social media that they gave it a, a little report here and there. And I'm not hearing the word terrorist being said at all. And is it a Christian terrorist attack? A, a secular terrorist attack? No, none of that mate, none of that. Why? Because the victims are Muslims. Is this what we've come to for votes? Let's leave it there guys, until next time. Assalamu alaikum.